In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. On this day, our eyes are fixed upon the Holy Cross, the joy of every Christian soul, the path to salvation, the road to eternal victory, the weapon against pain, sorrow, and death, the doorway to the heavenly kingdom. More prayers are prayed, more readings are read, more hymns chanted than any other time. The church atmosphere put us face to face with the Lamb of God as we witness the events transpiring before our eyes. We are not only witnessing to the holy passion of our good Savior, but we become participants in the story of salvation. Today is the day that all of history has been waiting for, the day that Christ pays the punishment for my sins and yours. He left heaven to take what is mine, the punishment I deserve for all my sins, and give me what is His, eternity with Him. This is the day that the prophets prophesied about. They foretold the suffering and crucifixion of Jesus hundreds of years before His birth. We know that Jesus truly is God because He fulfilled these prophecies. Isaiah 53, 5-12 we see our beloved during the first hour tried and convicted under false accusations and testimony. Then in the third hour, bruised, whipped, spat upon and mocked for our sakes. In the sixth hour, he was crucified. In the ninth hour, he gave his soul to the Father. In the eleventh, stabbed with a spear, and finally in the twelfth hour, buried in the tomb. Let us follow our beloved in every hour suffering, understanding that all was done to save us. This is the day of pain the day of sorrows. It is the commandment for us not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for His sake. Philippians 1.29 By actively participating in the Holy Passion Week, through fasting, prayer, and repentance, we suffer for His sake. Through the meditation of the cross, we witness His divine love for us. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So on this day, let us stretch out our arms towards the cross, so that the crucified Lord may stretch out his arms towards us. The hands that Adam stretched out towards the tree of knowledge, breaking the commandment, were unworthy of stretching out towards the tree of life to revive the gifts of the God that they had despised. Our Lord took these hands and attached them to the cross so that He might kill their killer and arrive at His marvelous life. And isn't the thief on the left a magnified version of how we currently live our lives on earth? He was focused on getting back to his earthly ways, so he asked the Lord to let him live so he can continue to do his transgression. Isn't that how sin locks and chains us to lose focus on the heavenly things even when the Lord is right next to us? So I pray, my Lord and Savior, your body is torn by whips and I wear nice clothes, living lavishly and carelessly. You are given the mirror to drink 
and I enjoy the desires of life. You comfort my pains and sufferings, and I refuse to repent. I ask you to have mercy upon me, for I know how tender is your overflowing mercy. Glory to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. One God, Amen. Young Orthodox Toronto Christians, YOTC 2019.